Would you join me in a pledge of allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, before we uh, get started, I'd like to ask the committee a question. Fourth of July week, executive meeting would be on the 6th. Uh, I don't see any reason we can't have it, but I wanted to make sure we're going to have enough attendance uh, to have the meeting. So, uh, so I guess I'm asking, do you want to have a meeting on the 6th? Is, is there enough people who are going to be able to make it? Yeah. I'm going to be here. Okay, good. Because that's my preference. I didn't want to cancel it because we will take care of uh, – We'll take care of all the committee assignments or the committee stuff that was assigned to committees. So all the committees will have their meetings at that executive meeting. Okay. All right. So your answer is Beth. There'll be no meeting on Tuesday. All the committee meetings will be put over to the executive committee. Okay. Okay. Oh no, land use is the following week, Tom. So uh, I'm talking about those. Those uh, meetings the that were, would be on the 4th, because the 4th of July falls on a Tuesday. Okay, so. Uh, um, the legislative would be on the 11th, but I was thinking, because we're going to have a nice meeting this Tuesday, packed on, that we would cancel. We normally cancel July legislative. Okay. 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 Is everyone okay with that? Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Okay, next we have the approval of minutes from uh, May 4th. Moved. Second. Motion second. All in f any additions or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We have the me uh, uh, minutes from May 11th. Moved. Moved. Second. second. Any additions or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And then we have the uh, executive session minutes from May 11th. Moved. Second. Okay. Any additions or corrections? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Uh, is there any old business to bring forward today? Any old business? Then we'll get to uh, the new business. Uh, discussion uh, uh, regarding available liquor license. Uh, Jim? Just to follow up on our discussion of last time, I think you have in your packet, and I mentioned at uh, the May meeting when this came up, that there is now an available Class A when the Rocco's annexation was completed when Lockport took that property by voluntary annexation together with an annexation agreement, taking jurisdiction of that property into Lockport, and so that license is now available it's under the control of uh, the city of Lockport. Uh, the final sort of follow-up issues with their police department uh, have been completed. And um, we even enclosed the annexation agreement if you want to read all the particulars because under Illinois law with an annexation agreement, Lockport can waive certain ordinance requirements that otherwise would be applicable and I think that was part of the quid pro quo with with the uh, landowner. But from our point of view, it's over with in terms of any jurisdiction. That license is now available. Okay. And uh, so that's where we left sort of the discussion okay, on May so, 4th. So, so the, so the st establishment, and uh, uh, Class A is on-premise uh, consumption, correct? Correct. Okay. So... Uh, and that license still, is, well, that establishment is still there. It's just under a different jurisdiction. Right. Uh, 
Uh, it's now a Lockport, a city of Lockport license okay. under their jurisdiction. So uh, the options we would have would be to uh, amend the ordinance to reduce the uh, uh, license, a uh, Class A license, uh, which quite honestly is my preference because, you know, you have the districts would have some input whether they felt it was appropriate to issue another uh, license in their area, especially since it's uh, on-premise consumption. Uh, and an applicant can always can always come to the county because we can add liquor licenses if they want to apply for a liquor license. At least there's a process and there's a public hearing and the district members, the county board members, have some input on whether they feel it's an appropriate uh, place for such a establishment. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, I'll put it up for discussion. Uh, well, I, I like to say, I, I, I would like to entertain a motion at some point that would uh, uh, reduce that license uh, in the county. So, Mike? so would you like to amend the ordinance so that the ordinance says it's an automatic feature that I, I, when a situation I, like this I, is the I, license I, automatically goes away, I, but we'd I, have to vote it. I, I, I asked Mary that, and she said we cannot because it requires a public hearing to change the ordinance. Okay. So you so you can't do it because you have but to. But we a, can just have a resolution to decrease by one. No. That's what I'm saying. We can't oh, so we automatically can't do it, do it automatic. because it, require, cause it requires a public hearing because it is a change to the ordinance. Okay. So. Well, we can't automatically do it, but it just requires a public notice. No, it requires we a public. Can't write the ordinance, but can't we write the ordinance no, to start you, the process? You have to change the ordinance, so Mary. Why don't you explain it? So, a, a, I want to say I did propose language, and I just sent it to Reagan and Jim Harvey last night that would add a duty to the liquor commissioner that he come in anytime there is a relinquishment of a liquor license and inform you, which would then trigger the conversation that we're having today. Um, but to amend, the, to amend an ordinance, the county board always has to hold a public peer, hearing that allows the public to come in and comment on whether they think the amendment is appropriate and, and offer persuasive evidence as to why the county board should, uh, you know, vote in favor of their position. So you wouldn't have an automatic language in the ordinance. It would have to be something that would come through the committee structure and a public hearing would have to be held at the county board or at one of the committees subject to public notice. So there wouldn't be an automatic reduction in the number of licenses. But there could be the language that would start the process for that reduction. Which, which is why I proposed the language I did that requires the liquor commissioner to come in and inform you. And at that point, if you desire to start that process, that would trigger it. So that, uh, that public hearing has to be triggered from the board? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. And, that, and that's, I, I think, then allows the county board members to have some input uh, whether they felt it was appropriate uh, uh, to have a liquor establishment of any type uh, in that particular location. Uh, so uh, I, I think it's a good process uh, uh, myself. But uh, Because otherwise, if we do nothing and that license stays there, and it's all in the executive's office if someone comes yeah. forward. And, and or do we still have it? It goes to the executive's office. And in our license, there's really no criteria for where a license would go. So, so it's not like this license, uh, for example, is in Lockport, that that license stays in Lockport. That license then can go from you know, Lock, Lockport to Homer, uh, right, right. unincorporated Homer, say, yeah. township. Or it could come to Frankfort Township or we have plenty of liquor licenses, by the way. I know I've mentioned it more than once. Or they, you know, or it can go, you know, uh, I don't know if, you know, I, I think they got to be however many feet from a church. But all of a sudden it goes, it was 500 feet from a church. It's 501 foot from Herb's church. 
you know, he can go over and get the sinners though. No, but but uh, you know what I'm saying? Like it may not just be in an appropriate place, but there's nothing in the ordinance or there's nothing that gives the liquor commissioner the discretion to say, oh, you can't put it there. No, and, you're and right. You guys set the parameters by ordinance because you're the legislative body. We're just like the mayors in any of your local towns, whether it's Manhattan, Money, or whatever. The executive is the liquor commissioner, and and you know legislatively you determine, you know the number, the classifications, and as Speaker Musa said, you know we don't have you know any parameters if if we say well there's too many in lockport township i mean he does have the discretion not to issue a license even if there's one but you're the only one that can do anything about the numbers because you're the legislative body yeah. and we're just the executive uh and and just similar to the mayor just like your mayor and you know Moni, we're yeah. we're like the mayor uh as the liquor commissioner sure. for will county so i think they think you know, by reducing and then having people come back and requesting, there's always a public hearing. So then there's always public input. Uh, the way it is now, uh, you know, there really is no public input. If they have the zoning and the special use, they don't even need to go anywhere. It, uh, the liquor commissioner can just issue, issue it. And if there's really no parameters to say, you know, and say in, you know, in geography of where things will go, you know, so there's not literally like the discretion for the liquor commission to say, well, there's already five liquor licenses on this block. We're going to put another one there. You know, I mean, that just, and, and then of course, you know, so uh, that's why I think this is a better, and this is a system uh, that probably is uh, more common in municipalities. You know, they lower those all, all the time and they never have excess Licenses. licenses available. Right. So, uh, right, so do we have language yet? You're saying the motion to be so. Well, actually, the motion would be to uh, uh, amend the liquor. Uh, well, Mary's got some. We got a couple things. It would just be a motion to amend the uh, ordinance for the purpose of uh, additional language for uh, uh, what Mary is proposing and for uh, uh, number of licenses. Right. Is that two? That, that would be the purpose. Is that well, two motion or the one? I think it be, could be one. One? No, yeah, it could one. be one. To amend the liquor ordinance. Amend the, the liquor language. ordinance. We will have that language for you. Okay. Before. So there would okay. be a motion just, just to amend the move. move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now, now, Mary, if we can do a, we need a public, public yeah. hearing, yeah. Okay. Uh, and maybe we can do it uh, 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 we can do it just before, the, we can do it during the meeting, or we can do it. Uh, I'm not sure if we have time to publish before the meeting for the requirements. I think it's seven days prior to the meeting, and we don't. No, it. not this county board meeting. I'm okay. thinking next month. For July. Okay. July. Okay. So okay. Schedule, schedule a public hearing. Okay. Uh, I suppose it could be at the okay. county board meeting, right? Yeah. So we'll make it at the county board okay. meeting. And then, uh, and then after the public hearing, we'll go back and, okay? All right. Okay, thanks everyone. Okay, uh, uh, number two, declaring sheriff's uh, seized vehicle surplus and authorizing disposal. Moved. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Authorizing a contract with uh, uh, Stip Brothers excavating uh, for the uh, Shawana Water, Shawnina Water <laughs> Service uh, Connection Project. Moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Authorizing IGA with the City of Wilmington for electronic recycling. Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Turning the 2017 prevailing wage rates. Moved. Moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Authorizing the county executive to execute fiscal 2018 Northeastern Illinois Area Agency on Aging application for grant funds. Moved. Moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, 
okay. Proclamations, Herb, you want to say anything on proclamations? We have no proclamations to be read on this month. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this could be a, this could be a quick quick meeting, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, appointments for the county executive. Jim, there's, um, there's no proclamation, but we talked to Nick. Um, I think some of you are aware. I think um, there will be a short meeting on Tuesday, which will be the last. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. In regards to uh, Leah Pardo has uh, made a donation to uh, children. Yeah. 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 That's right. No, 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 right. That's it, yes, that's right. Uh, okay, appointments by the county executive. Move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, we also need to leave a space for the uh, uh, leave a space for the uh, facilities management hire. Uh, we don't know. The executive's office don't know if it'll be quite done, but they, they feel that we can uh, be it could be ready by the county board meeting. So we will leave a uh, spot for the hires uh, for uh, facility management person. Moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Uh, and then also for the WIB director. Uh, well, that's uh, yes. Also for the WIB director. That's workforce investment. <laughs> Leave us, leave a, leave a space uh, for that. Thank you. Moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. And uh, okay. Now we're we're to committees. Land use. Tom, do you have any, any anything on? Uh, Need to save uh, space for two items, uh, two special use, one special use and one extension. Are you making that motion? Make that motion. Okay, Second. motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Anything That's else, all. then? Okay. Uh, finance, Michael? Yeah, we're just appropriating some grant funds and doing an assignment of tax sales certificates. That's all we have this month. Okay. Any questions for Mike? Any public work? Yeah. A variety of different uh, contracts for a lot. The uh, transfer of jurisdiction of 95th Street will be on you to build a ball and that passed unanimously from the committee. And then we tabled uh, last month the Weber Road issue at the committee by the county board meeting. So we're going to give the state's attorney and the applicant more time. And I guess they, there's another meeting scheduled. Is that? For this afternoon. So it's on the agenda for next week, but I, I think we're going to wait to hear from the state's attorney. Well, well, it's tabled at the county board, so we'll have to remove it from the table. And then from there, we'll just make a determination whether uh, it's going to take longer for uh, continuing discussion one way or the other, or whether we leave it on or we remove it till they're ready to actually say this is it. This is the final. There will be no more discussion, you know. So, uh, okay. So we'll handle it at the board meeting, then, Don. All right? Okay. Thank you. Any questions for Don? A uh, judicial? No, we don't have anything that we'll be presenting to the board, though we did have a good discussion from the chief judge this week. Uh, we talked about electronic monitoring, which we're moving forward on. And we talked about a uh, family guidance grant of $540,000 that they received, which will uh, kind of uh, falls into our stepping up initiatives that we started discussing last year, where uh, they've got Vivitrol, some of you may or may not have heard about it. It's a, it's a, a shot that individuals who are addicted to opioids or opiates. Uh, and so they've gotten uh, enough funds to give about 100 individuals three, stop, three shots a piece of Vivitrol. And so uh, we're in discussions with them right now about the plan is to get that first shot to them while they're actually in jail and then they need to come back for two future shots afterwards. And what it does is it basically uh, reduces the desire for the opioid. And so uh, it's a new program that we got the grant on. It's going to start July 1st. And uh, so how we'll much is that first shot there? $1,200 shot. shot. Each shot. Each shot is $1,200. And it lasts for about 30 days. Right. And so. That's why it really should be 
it really should be part of an overall uh, recovery program. Mm -hmm. it is. I mean, they have to commit to recovery uh, a program. Recovery. Not only are we just going, going to administer the shock, but there's uh, support that's required there as well. Uh, and then the plan is, is because we're, we can only afford three shots, uh, Family Guidance actually works with them to get Medicaid or things like that so that they can get them. Because I believe they really like to do it for about a year. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, so they try to get into so that insurance will come to the And there are times when, you know, they can be in a program and then they do feel they can go out without it. That's right, yeah. I mean, it's not like they feel they necessarily have to stick with the shots. There could be a time point during that first well, year. $1,200 ought to heal yeah. now. And make me look better. <laughs> yeah. so, so, wow. Uh, That's a okay. Thank you. Uh, we're moving forward on some of the things we've discussed regarding the stepping up initiatives. Also, you guys will shortly talk about we're starting to work with, uh, we've got scheduled in June a meeting with the chief judge and two vendors to discuss what the pricing would be on electronic monitoring. That electronic monitoring involves GPS devices, uh, radio frequency devices, which are more for home confinement, and breathalyzers where uh, we can actually, a police officer or anyone can pick up the phone and tell the individual, hey, in five minutes we need you to come phone the breathalyzer. And the technology that we're looking at is that it actually takes a picture of them while they're doing this so that we can get spatial recognition so we can confirm the system brother. Yeah. <laughs> so. Any, any questions for Darren? Okay. Uh, public health and safety. So I'm not, I don't have anything, no reports or anything, right, Beth? There is a report to place on file. Okay, I'll have a report to place on file, and then I will probably talk a little bit about updates that happened at my committee. We had, um, uh, we, we got an introduction to Joyce Parker, who's our new uh, director at the TB clinic. That was just what happened at committee. Mm -hmm. And then we had a fentanyl update, and that was from uh, Dr. Burke and Jeff Jers from the police department, sheriff's department. Um, and then we had a health department update on their summer programs like mosquito abatement, things like that. And then we had discussion um, considering the uh, amending the open uh, burning, uh, burning ordinance. That was it. So that's all. Just I'll have a little update on that, but just reports will be all in place. Okay. Thanks. Very good. Any questions for Judy? Uh, legislative and policy. We have our uh, meeting on Tuesday. And we will have one of our consultants, we'll have Brent Hassert coming in. And then, but prior to that, right at 9 o'clock, we will have Smith Garson call in and do a recap of our visit and maybe talk about how we can communicate um, the future for our future meetings. and. Yeah, we have a lot. It's kind of just end of the year wrap up with going on. DC is an ongoing federal issues, but uh, yeah, it'll be a good meeting on Tuesday. Okay. Any questions for Suzanne? All right. Capital, Mike, you want to give to Capital? Yeah, on Capital, we're going to have a resolution authorizing Will County Executive to amend the total project costs for the courthouse based on all the things that we saw in our presentation. And then our Beth, are we are we doing a resolution or, or did it end at the uh, cap on the authorization to amend for the, the deceleration lane and? Oh, that's going forward. It's all going that's forward. going to go to the county. It's all going well. forward so this month, yeah. And that'll be for the deceleration lane, the relocated vehicle impound, and the SOG building, which I still call it. Uh, we'll have that resolution as well. And it's the only two resolutions we have, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions on capital? Uh, executive committee, any questions for me on anything for executive? Yes. So again, um, we have two things, and the second one is executing a contract with Ann Schneider and Associates. So my issue with this is we have not seen the freight study, any anything, so I think it's premature that we're already offering her a position. Um, I do think that the in some respects, the freight study was not done as, as community friendly as I thought that it should have been. It seemed like it was not. It was very friendly to the freight industry, but I don't know that it was as friendly to the c community itself. Um, I think that it was an oversight on her part that she didn't have a freight study out in Eastern Will County because we do have a lot of um, new industry coming out our way. We have a possible CSX terminal, and I think I just think it's premature. I think we should see the results from the freight study before we hire somebody. That's just how I feel. Okay. Okay. Thank 
Okay. But I don't know for sure, Judy, but what was the direction given her? Was did we give her direction to go to Eastern Will? Do that? I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Well, I don't think that, we gave her direction. No. I don't know that we gave her well, direction. Well, I, 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 I would tell you that I think the new the meeting that was in New Lenox, uh, I believe, included Eastern Will, and and, and there was. Uh, a number of people who came out from Eastern Will County to the New Lenox, when the meeting was held in New Lenox. So, uh, you know, I, I would say this, and you know, and, and uh, I'm sure Judy would disagree with me, but uh, you know, there is that far eastern end of Will County, but you know, places like uh, Frankfort, we are on the eastern end of uh, of the county, and so when meetings are held there. You know, I think they're held there to kind of get in the the center of the population you're you're trying to get to. You know, whether whether you you think it was a stretch that New Lenox was uh, 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 too far for folks in Eastern Will County to come, I, I think we publicized it. I know people came from Eastern uh, the far, far eastern part of Will County, uh, so. Uh, so, but I, but but the bigger question. I, I know what the bigger question you're saying. It's not just the meeting. I, I, let me say this about the study. The study is primarily about freight, but it was also about livability. It was also about interaction with the community, and I think you'll see you, that is still part of it. I think there's some additional work that needs to be done in that regard. Uh, not uh, not just. Uh, 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 from a freight study, I think we we now need to do a comprehensive land use uh, study, uh, which we probably haven't done for some time. Uh, that incorporates all this, so I, I I do think this is a portion of it about the livability, but I do think that we probably have to uh, uh, commission a land use study. Maybe it can be entirely done in house. I don't know, because uh, we certainly do have those folks on staff that are capable of doing that. So uh, I, I agree with you that there's more work to be done. Uh, but you have to remember what our initial goal was, and the initial goal was is to position ourselves for grant money on the federal level, and that's why we focused more on. The freight portion, this initial this initial uh, study is on that freight portion, so we're positioned to receive uh, grant funds, you know, fast fast lane funds or fast act funds, whatever there. There's a number of them out there. So, so I'd ask you to keep that in mind. That the initial part is to uh, have something to present for. Uh, Grants, so we can get funding for some of our projects. So that's why it may be a little tilted right now. To be honest with you. So that's so. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. Is it going to help or hurt, Nick? <laughs> I mean, yeah. We'll see. Okay. So, all right. so well, I, but I think the facts are important. Is there there's can be a lot of agree to disagree on some of these issues because believe me. A lot of the residents don't see the positives of freight. They say all I see is trucks. They don't see the value. And I think that's one of our ch one of our challenges was identified early on is demonstrating, documenting any benefits, quantifying it so that people have at least they still may say I don't care. But as far as the the study that's still ongoing, it's not like a traditional transportation plan or some of the required public hearings and things where you have a finite time and then it's over. The comment period continues with our freight study, so people can still offer their insight and their concerns. All the documents that have been published are on the website. And my understanding, and I don't want to get in an argument about this because I think we're working on trying to set up one more meeting, but there was a meeting originally scheduled for out in the eastern townships, and it had to be rescheduled to New Lenox because for whatever reason, I think the venue couldn't allow it or something. So, but I know based on uh, Ms. Ogala and Ms. Summers' comments, the consultants were looking at trying to do one more meeting. But 
Um, we, I went to one of the meetings at, in Wilmington. I know other board members went to New Lenox or to Plainfield, but as we all know when you host meetings, you can publicize it, you can put it in the paper, you can get it on the radio, and people still don't show up. So, but that doesn't mean they haven't had the opportunity to go on the website, look at the documents, or comment, and they still can. We had a meeting specifically for the environmental people because they felt like they didn't, even though they were welcome to the public meetings too and some of them took advantage, but we had a specific meeting, Sierra Club, Open Lands, and a lot of other local residents were there, and they were told the same thing comment review the thing when the plan comes out it's going to come to the board for a, a an approval you'll have comment periods there so it's this isn't a closed process by any means and the one thing i heard from a lot of people is well you should have done this 20 years ago well we probably should have but we're doing it now and we're trying to get to one of the, th the many things we're trying to do is develop recommendations that can be implemented some immediately some over the longer term some of that be more clear truck routes but to mr. Moose's point about land use planning it's one of the things I've heard at a lot of these meetings is we shouldn't be do de doing developments far off the highways far off we should have it closer to the main road so that they have less of that last mile connection because where have we had the issues is getting trucks onto the main highways safely on and off and efficiently so so that i guess my message is there's still plenty of time for residents and others to comment and and we are doing outreach to everybody and it's and you as board members can tell your constituents go on the website look at the reports offer your comments because we're still taking them and that will figure into the final document that's written so and i believe i got um member from Colin that works with Ann. I don't know if I had shared this with the board members, but there was that survey, and he, I believe the last time I checked in with him, there was about 400 responses. So I, I don't know if I had sent that to you. Yes, I went to New York. And, and, and I did talk to uh, folks who were coming. There was no one from the further, further east to that. You know, so, yeah, the other part is those who have an interest, it can never be perfect. It can't be a perfect day, it can't be a perfect time. But those who really want to get their input, my experience has been they get it in. And they make an effort to contact you somehow or get their responses in. So, anyways, okay, anything else on this? Okay, uh, all right, then we'll uh, uh, move on. There is going to be a need for a, uh, uh, an exec executive session today for the uh, uh, pending litigation. So uh, don't run off. Uh, is there any public comments at this time? Public comments? Public comments? Okay, we'll move on. Any any uh, comments by committee members at this time? Okay, uh, uh, I have no announcements. Uh, I will entertain uh, a motion to approve the county board agenda as amended. Ooh. Second, we have a second. I hear somebody say second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, and then I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of pending litigation. Second. Motion second. Take the roll, please. And appeal? Yes. 